Titty. Thank you. Thank you. What did that intro have to do with the video? Absolutely nothing. This is my channel. I am an agent of chaos. You're still here. I like you. I spit in the face of authenticity. I am nothing more than a bizarre combination of uncomplimentary traits that resemble a note written by a serial killer. The true self is a myth perpetuated by self-help gurus as a means of convincing the depressed masses to purchase their books in order to fund their lavish lifestyles where they get to regularly bang a Ukrainian model that only goes by one name, like Cher or Jesus, while you sit in your room making beef stroganoff to their positive affirmation videos. Just be yourself. A sentiment, nay, a command, hurled at us by peers and inspirational speakers alike. What nonsensical drivel. Subscribing to this mindset only works if you're inherently a tolerable person. What if you happen to be insufferable? Then what? Are you doomed to be annoying for all of eternity? I am tolerable to about 57.3% of the human population. And half of those people only watch me because I'm a comedy dominatrix, slinging my jokes at them in a manner that makes them want to call me mommy. The other 42.7% view me as a mouthy broad, the embodiment of everything that they detest politically and comedically. You are not prospering in life. You are not being a cash money double cheeked up baddie unless you are building up a Rolodex of enemies. I am prepared to battle all of my arch nemeses in a battle of wits. Or just a regular straight up sword fight. Meet me at midnight behind the Long John Silvers. The just be yourself crowd never seem to consider the people who are just naturally horrible to be around. They show up to the barbecue, make several attempts at what they think constitutes a joke. No one laughs. Not even a single meek chuckle can be mustered. They repeat themselves, convinced the party attendee simply didn't find their joke audible that they did. They heard. After lingering around the sizzling meats, they inform everyone that they must rush back home in order to give their cat medication for her feline AIDS. A random girl on the couch abruptly takes a break from giving her Tinder date a hickey to ask, I'm sorry, your cat has what now? But they've already shot out the door. There is no cat. There never was a cat. The point I'm trying to make is that not everyone is naturally charming or engaging. These people simply cannot afford to be themselves all the time. They are being asked to sacrifice their social life at the altar of authenticity. The notion that our personalities are innate, consistent, and that we should try above all to be as organic as possible at all times is ridiculous. Your human meat suit is an avatar. You can always make upgrades. You are under no obligation to have a consistent personality. I personally pretend to be different people all the time. I open credit cards in their name. Now is this considered illegal? Definitely. But it's only a crime if you get caught. Besides, I've already mass ordered several wigs. I've invested too much. No one is truly the same person around all groups of people, let alone when they're being recorded. It is nearly impossible because the second that one knows that their physical form is being captured by the ever intrusive lens of a camera. Something shifts, at least on a subconscious level. Our monkey brains understand that we're being watched. Be careful. If the tribe realizes that you're a freak, they might expel you from the village. Our brains have not evolved past the self-preservational instinct. I tend to be relatively uninhibited when it comes to interacting with others. But even I can only reveal about 90% of who I actually am. Heck, my personality changes depending on the time of day, what piece of media I've recently consumed, whether or not I'm wearing sunglasses. My true raw form is a mystery, even to me. I don't think I'm prepared to meet her. What if she doesn't like me? What if she has bangs? This isn't exactly the hottest take, but I don't think that anyone can truly be themselves in public or private, nor should they be required to. There are parts of yourself that you hide deep within a closet, like your unfulfilled ambitions of becoming Hannah Montana or your weird childhood crush on Anne Frank. Some things are better left crouched in darkness. A small sprinkling of shame allows the social contract to stay intact. Any one of you who genuinely wishes that everyone acted like who they truly are will rue the day that you ever utter those words. Just wait until your coworkers at Chase Visa or whatever dead-end job that you have, begin showing up on Monday morning sporting neon green dreadlocks and inviting everyone to their spoken word recitals. You might wander into that venue with an open mind. But after the fifth poem centered on vaginal baking and a poet exploring their trauma through the lens of Cardi B lyrics, your patience begins to waver. While attempting to use the bathroom, a woman hands you a pamphlet on a workshop where one can make artwork exclusively with menstrual blood and CVS receipts. At this point, you begin to see static and your body starts shaking violently. Get out now. Quick. The man about to perform next just pulled out a ventriloquist dummy. Why am I such a Debbie Downer? I hear individuals saying that they just want other people to feel more comfortable being who they truly are and my immediate reaction is that of negativity. Why am I like this? You know, I'm starting to feel a weird sensation in the pit of my stomach. Is this what empathy is? Am I beginning to shed my pessimistic ways? On second thought, I just might be hungry. Authenticity, might I add, is only afforded to the pretty. Let me explain. We've all seen cringe compilations. It's only a matter of time before I'm included in one of them. A badge of honor that I will wear with pride. Yet have you noticed that the trend of the anime slash dark twisted mental patient that's making hot eye contact with you from across the ward, clearly made by people who have never actually been institutionalized, that these supposedly cringy people have been following, have also been adopted by the more attractive set of influencers? All of these people, whether attractive or not, 
are expressing themselves in a way that reflects their genuine interests. Yet the cute ones do not receive nearly the same amount of vitriol. Someone who is conventionally attractive can be shy and quiet and they will be viewed as the mysterious type. Oh, I bet you he writes poetry and can only bust a nut to risque images rendered in black and white. So old-fashioned. If you happen to be crusty with the same exact personality, well then enjoy being referred to as the guy with Columbine energy in your classmate's private group chat. You know what? I think it's time for another tangent. Let's talk about ugly people. Where is the ugly representation. All this talk of self-acceptance that has arisen out of the Be Yourself movement is the consequence of this bizarre wave of corporate progressivism that has taken a strong hold on the cultural zeitgeist. The masses demand better representation. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Yet there happens to be one demographic in particular that is still left on the outskirts of the entertainment industry. Left to rot and fester. For far too long, Hollywood has been ignoring the cries of the ugly. Yes, the truly busted. Mother Nature's bastard children. No longer will they be silenced. Now if you're thinking, wait, how dare you speak so loudly on this topic. You're not even ugly. First, I would like to say thank you. This entire video was just a ploy for me to get showered with compliments in the comment section. You have fallen into my trap. I have bested you yet again. When will you learn? Secondly, I'm speaking on this topic for the same exact reason that I plan to have the entire script of Brokeback Mountain tattooed on my back. Because I am, above all, an ally of all disenfranchised people. The ugly are truly oppressed in this country. Dare I say, the most depressed. That's actually not true. Amy Schumer fans have occupied that spot for quite some time now. Where is the ugly representation in Hollywood? Huh? Where? Just like the alleged Jeff Goldblum anime cosplay photo shoot. I demand to see it! He won't respond to any of my DMs. I'm running out of Twitter accounts that he hasn't blocked. The dusty girl or boy in any high school film is at worst an LA 7 and a Midwestern 12. People in Milwaukee would sacrifice their firstborn child for a night with one of these actors. Yet this is who producers think nerds will resonate with? A model they slapped glasses and a back brace on? I recognize her from page three of the Victoria's Secret catalog. You know what this is? The appropriation of ugly culture. One of the reasons that I appreciate the British, and trust me, it's not a long list, is that they actually have the courage to cast conventionally unattractive people in their television and film roles. It's remarkable. Flipping through their channels is like looking at the before section of a plastic surgery brochure. These people really managed to conquer 90% of the world despite eating beans on toast. I don't know whether to be disgusted or impressed. Imagine investing that much into vital trade routes for spices and then incorporating none of them into your national cuisine. You might have thought that I was exclusively xenophobic against the French. You thought, right? If you are internationally recognized as a country, I'm coming for you. The American entertainment industry better take a note from the British because I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle a live-action remake of The Hunchback of Notre Dame starring one of those shaved-down creatures from Riverdale. Look at them. It's like staring at the body of a porpoise. So let this be a message to any casting agents watching, which according to my analytics is exactly zero. Take a stand. Make a change. Accidentally lose the headshots of the hotties auditioning. Allow the little theatrical gremlins of the world to get their mangled feet in the door of the industry. And if you choose not to, well, well, nothing will actually happen to you. I gave up using voodoo dolls back in 2018, so I really have no power over you. Who would have thought that acquiring an individual's hair without their knowledge would be so difficult? Did you know that also constitutes a crime? <laughs> because I sure didn't. Thank you for watching. And remember, even though my NSA agent might be watching me, rest assured that I'm also watching him. Shout out to my patrons. If you would like to donate to my Patreon, then click on the link in the description down below. Bye. Like and comment and subscribe. Thank you. I'm very talented.